It's the phone call no one wants to get. Something is wrong at your child's school, very wrong. What's the first thing you should do? Call your child on their cell phone? Call the school, call the police, or just get in the car and race for the school. Those may be very reasonable first impulses, but actually those reasonable responses could threaten your child's safety. Parents too close to an incident could get in the way of emergency response teams and even slow down their efforts. This video has been developed under a U.S. Department of Education grant to help you understand how to make the best response in the case of an emergency at your child's school. Uh, during an emergency drill, uh, the parents' role is really to stay away from the school. Um, I know that parents get you know, worried that their son or daughter is you know, not safe, but if they're in the building, we're making sure they're safe. We run drills so they are safe. Um, don't call the school because that's a lot of that's a big problem for us. Is when we're trying to call the police, we pick up the phone and there's a parent on the line, and so it's very hard for us to um, contact the police if the parents are calling into the school. When the drill is over or when the real incident is over, we'll make sure that we send out you know, some kind of letter or maybe we'll use our teleparent and inform the parents, this is what happened. We want to make sure that you guys know what happened. Teachers are really prepared for all the drills and they have backpacks for the evacuation drills and have all sorts of supplies in case something happened. And so I feel very safe. Schools have to confront all sorts of sudden dangers requiring emergency response. Environmental events like a chemical spill, weather-related emergencies like tornadoes, or the presence of a dangerous intruder in or near the school. Basically, there are three strategies designed to protect your kids. The first right. is lockdown. lockdown. This plan is put into effect if an internal or external threat is identified at the school. All school doors are immediately locked and students are confined inside their classrooms. No one gets into or out of the school until the authorities make the all-clear announcement and no student will be released during a lockdown. The second is shelter in place. Let's say a hazardous material spill occurs near your child's school or a tornado threatens to touch down. The most important thing is to get the students to designated places of refuge. Finally, evacuation may be necessary in certain building emergencies, such as a fire and students will be led to safe assembly areas. They can then be released to parents or guardians who show proper picture identification. Depending on the threat, school authorities will use these protocols individually or in combination. Uh, my role was first to collect names uh, of the students that we were transporting uh, so that uh, when the rest of the group realized that they weren't there, that we had them accounted for. Okay. Um, and uh, to serve as a comforting figure, to ride with them to the hospital, to be there to meet the parents uh, as a representative of the school district. I also uh, want to applaud the student body for the efforts that they do because they take it very seriously and um, because we have had some real experiences here. So when we do lockdowns on a regular basis, uh, students uh, act appropriately. Uh, when we did an evacuation, even the police and the fire department from three different communities uh, applauded our efforts, how orderly and how organized we were and how efficient we were in terms of maintaining the safety of all students, staff and, uh, and faculty. So how do I get my child home safely? First, closely monitor radio and TV news channels for directions from the school or public safety officials about the reunification process with your child. They'll let you know where to go and when, but please remember, you must bring proper picture identification, such as a driver's license, military ID, or passport. And please be patient. The process can be very time-consuming, but necessary. So what can you do right now? Be prepared. Make sure your child's emergency contact information is accurate and up-to-date. Become familiar with your school's emergency communication program. For instance, this district uses the teleparent system to notify parents of bad weather alerts and emergencies. Here are some simple do's and don'ts in a school emergency. Do stay tuned to local TV and radio stations for official information from school or public safety representatives about the emergency. Do listen carefully for official word from school authorities on where, when, and how to reunite with your child. But please, don't call or rush to your child's school. Phone lines and staff need to be free to respond to the emergency situation. 
and don't try to get in touch with your child by calling or messaging them. Staff and students are discouraged from using cell phones for strict safety reasons. We hope you can see that first reactions can be the wrong reactions and actually lead to making it more difficult for public safety and school personnel to do their job ensuring your child's safety. So be prepared, learn all you can about your school's emergency procedures, and let the trained professionals in your schools and communities do their best job making sure that your family is safely together again at the end of every day.